Hello and welcome to my first YouTube tutorial. In this tutorial I plan to show you how I go about modeling a PS1 style slash esque log uh, for my personal project, Project Nostalgia. I have received a lot of comments regarding tutorials so I thought hey I've got some free time why not try and help some people out. All I ask is please be nice, this is my first tutorial and I'm way out of my comfort zone here. <laughs> so let's get moving. Okay so the first thing you want to do before you start modelling is to make sure that you have the scene set up correctly. Uh, this will help later on when we go down the texturing process because um, it will display the textures more accurately, more pixelated. Um, so what you're going to want to do is to go on to customize, preferences, and then in the viewports, um, select choose driver. You want to make sure that you are using direct 3D driver setup. So to do this, make sure that you select legacy direct 3D. And then apply and restart your 3d studio max once it's reset click configure driver and make sure that you use the same settings that i have here and then once you have done that you are good to go we will now move on to the modeling part so there are many different ways you could go about making a 3d model I will demonstrate one way how i would make a 3d model of a broken tree log so I would begin by selecting the geometry button and select the cylinder button and just drag the cylinder anywhere in the viewport. I would then just scale and adjust its shape so it's kind of long like a log and then uh, make it look like it's placed on the ground. The grid represents the ground. Um, to see the wireframe you can press F4 on the keyboard and pressing seven on the keyboard can give you the poly count and verts. So I'm simply just messing with how many sides that the log will have um, because it's a PS1 style, you want to keep it relatively low poly. In these viewports, you will notice that you can only see the wireframe, but if you were to click on the viewport, you know it's selected by the yellow bounding box and press F3, it will display the model. This button over here will zoom extends to uh, fit the model within the viewport. So I right click it and make it an editable poly. I then start to manipulate the shape of the cylinder to make it look more like a lug. So I use the edge select tool. I just select and then I press ring to make a ring around all the edges. And then if I was to press so, um, connect it will give me a edge loop around the center of the model I continue to edit the model adjusting it with the scale tool and adding edge loops when necessary I want to make the one side of the lug hollow on the inside so I do this by selecting the face and pressing insert and we're gonna put a hole in this side of the model then extrude and using the sliders you can move in but we want to give the illusion that this goes further so we make it a little bit smaller and then push it in I also want to clean up the topology a little bit so I'll select the cut tool and connect all of the edges to one another so I would like a chopped branch kind of like sticking out the top of the model. So using the edge loops, cuts, extrudes um, and inserts, I'm able to manipulate the shape of the model um, to create the illusion of a branch broken and sticking out. Thank you. 
So once the shape of the lug is finished uh, and I am happy with the results, um, I then moved over to the elements button, selected the object and cleared its smoothing groups and gave it a value of one. So the smoothing groups, as you can see, determines how smooth the model looks. Um, there are some areas which are too smooth, like the inside of the log and the top of the broken branch. So I select the face tool and just select the areas which I don't want to be so smooth. I then just simply give them a different um, smoothing group value. So this next step is really important. As you can see, the location where the object pivots from is incorrect. Um, if you was to place this into a game, it would look really messed up and it would like glitch through the floor. So it's important that you get the pivot point in its correct place. So we do this by moving over to the hierarchy um, button, effects pivot only and then center to the object. So now we have fixed the pivot within the object. We need to fix it within the world space. You right click the move tool and just change the X, Y, Z coordinates to zero. But as you can see, the object is now going for the grid. So to fix this, we go over to, we go over to hierarchy and then we select effect object only. And then using the move tool, we move it up above the grid. And that pretty much concludes the modeling side of things. Um, so next I will move on to uh, UVW maps. So we can then uh, apply a material slash texture onto the model. So I UV map by applying a UV map modifier to the model by selecting modify and then on the drop down list unwrap UVW. I then want to remove the currently displayed UV maps um, so I scroll down and then untick map seams. I use the point to point seams tool to draw the seams on the model. So once I've drawn all the seams, I use the polygon select tool and then select the faces within those seams and use the pout tool to stretch them out. I press the start pout button, which stretches the UV out. And then I press the start relax button to make the shape of the UV more closer to the actual shape it's supposed to represent. I pretty much repeat the same process for every part of the drawn seams and then place them within the grid space. So this is the final arrangement of my UV maps. Now we are ready to save and move on to the next process of texturing. For this we will be using a program called XNormal which will be used to bake shading information which will be the perfect base for us to start texturing from. So to do this we will export a temporary model as an OBJ file using these settings. So within X normal, you want to select high definition mesh, right click and add the temporary model and do the same for low. Then go down to baking options. Make sure that your resolution isn't higher than 256 by 256 as PS1's texture resolution wasn't all that high. Then in output file, select a temporary location for the texture to save in. Make sure that your settings match my settings and then hit generate maps. So this generated texture map will work well as a base for shading on our texture. Um, so I will open up my program of choice which is Adobe Fireworks and we will begin texturing. So the first thing you would want to do is to open the generated texture and then once you have found it you want to resave it 
but this time you want to give it a correct material slash texture name so mine is called log underscore diffuse but you can call it whatever you want so now we want to see how the material looks on the model within 3d studio max so first we want to change the view style to flat so we can check out how the material looks with no lighting applied to the model let's apply a material press m on the keyboard and then select any of the slots press this box by diffuse color select bitmap and then find your saved material before you select open copy the name of your material and paste it into this box and click this button then click go to parent button then do the same steps once more except the go to parent button and then simply drag the material onto the object and as you can see we have a nice start for the texturing process so before I begin texturing I go onto Google Images and I search things like tree bark texture, seamless grunge texture or moss texture overlay or things that are key words that are relevant to what I am modeling. So this being a tree trunk, I search those things and then I make like a reference um, palette and then I use these images to texture my model. Let's begin. I make sure I make a backup of the base texture and then just set it to hidden. I then want to make a mask which will be used as a cleanup. So I select the current layer, I make a copy with control C and control V to paste the copy. I want to turn this layer white so I press filter, adjust color, hue and saturation and turn the lightness to 100%. I then use the rectangle tool to draw a box around the whole scene and then I move that backwards one layer so we have a black and white mask. I then select both layers, right click and click flatten selection. I use the crop tool to clean everything outside of the canvas area. With the mask selected, I press filter, other and convert to alpha. And then I just simply rename that mask to something that's easy to spot if there are multiple layers and change its blend mode to arrays. So anything outside of the UV space will simply be erased and finally, to make use of the shading layer, simply select it, filter, other, and convert to alpha. Then lock it. I paste the bark texture into the scene, drag it below the shading layer, and I just adjust the scale. Save and preview how the texture looks in 3D Studio Max. And as you can see, with the shading layer applied to the texture, already we have a decent result. Though it's not perfect, it needs adjustments, um, it's not a bad place to start from. I just make some adjustments like the scale and tiling of the bark texture till I'm happy with the result. I now want to change the texture of the broken branch so I select another image of my reference and paste it in and just scale it over the UV area. I then repeat these steps over and over to each individual part of the log. Some reference textures might need further adjustments, so I use the filter and brightness and contrast and also the color curves to get a more accurate color. 
which matches the bark texture. So one of my favorite things to do is to throw a like a grunge texture over all of my textures. Um, you can get interesting results. So firstly, I try messing with the blend mode. But if that fails, I resort to converting the grunge texture into an alpha to give different shading variation. Again, I just make small changes and edits to the texture using references. So once I'm almost finished with the texture and I'm 90% happy, I make sure I select everything except the cutout layer and the backup of the shading layer. I right click and click flatten selection and then use the crop tool to clean everything up. I unhide the cutout layer and make a backup and select everything and flatten. This way it is a solid clean texture. I notice a bad seam along the bottom of the inside of the trunk. So to fix it, it's just a simple copy and a paste. And I just right click and transform and flip it. Move it into the correct position. And using the erase tool, I just blend it in. The last steps of my texturing is to make a copy of the shading layer once more and convert it to an alpha and then just change the transparency to around 50% and then for the canvas color I just simply select using the eyedropper tool a color that's most common in the material and that concludes my texture. So just by simply lowering the resolution of the texture, you can get some interesting results. So that concludes the PS1 style asset tutorial. Um, I really hope you enjoyed it and that you found it useful. Please like, comment and perhaps subscribe and check out my other videos of my personal project, Project Nostalgia. In the next tutorial I will show you how we can get this asset into Unreal Engine 4 and set up the scenes so that it looks PS1 style galore. <laughs> Thank you guys, bye bye.